Hello, my name is Danny Hopkins and I'm here at Brit Park in Shropshire with Managing Director Paul Myers. Hello, Paul. Hi. Now, what we've got here is a wishbone. Uh, I believe it's a wishbone for a Discovery 3, 4 and Range Rover Sport. Correct. Now, the traditional areas for these wishbones to fail on those vehicles is, I believe, front, lower and upper rear. Is that right? That's right, yes. Great yeah. stuff. Well, why wouldn't you just want to push a bush out? Why do you have to buy the whole unit? Uh, on these bushes, uh, this bush is, as you can see, probably twice the size of this one. Yeah. Uh, this is actually called a hydro bush and it's filled with oil. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's very, very difficult to actually push it out and put a new one in without damaging the bush. Right. So we, we would recommend putting a whole arm on. And Brit Park do the complete unit, obviously? We do this complete unit. Uh, it features Lenforda bushes and we also supply hardware kit, which is um, all exactly the same spec. Fantastic. Well, to show you how to go and fit these things, let's go to the workshop and have a quick chat with Martin. So here we are at the back of the Discovery, we've got the road wheel off and we can see the suspension arm in place. Now there's a little bit of stripping down to do before we actually tackle the fixings on the arm and it attaches to the vehicle at the top of the hub, there's a bush here on the chassis rail and one further forwards and it's very common for them to rust in place so we might be lucky the fixings might come undone but it's more likely that we're going to have to do some cutting. First thing we need to do is wire brush everything and put penetrating oil on all the fixings and Steve from Brit Parts here to do the job while I talk you through. Okay, so first of all, we're just gonna clear any dirt and debris away from the brackets on the arm to make removing the ABS sensor and the brake pipe a little bit easier. Obviously, being in the wheel arch, you get a lot of mud and dirt building up in all the little pockets. So just go around with a screwdriver and clear it all out. Once that's done, you can pop the ABS sensor cables out of their brackets. They're just held in with uh, little rubber grommets and take a wire brush to any, all the bolts that you can get to, all the threads, the nuts and uh, the bolt heads, to give you the best chance of getting them undone. The inboard fixings are slightly harder to get to because of how sort of concealed they are in the, inside the wheel arch. It takes a little bit of time to uh, clean those up. It's also worth cleaning up the brake pipe unions to make give you the best chance of getting those undone. This has actually had a replacement brake pipe on it, so hopefully the unions will come undone easily enough. Okay, so just to apply penetrating oil all over the threads of the bolts to help the, uh, the nuts come off. On the outer bolt that goes, attaches the top arm to the hub, it's, you need to paint mark the, uh, the cam bolt to make sure when you reassemble with the new top arm, you get it as close as possible. Um, obviously, any suspension work, you do need to have a four-wheel alignment done afterwards. So, give, to give you the best chance of getting the brake pipe unions undone, it's worth using a proper pipe spanner because you'll get a better purchase on the union rather than a normal open-ended spanner and they can round off very easily. So if you go up inside the wheel arch and disconnect the ABS sensor and the brake pad warning light sensor if you've got that, depending on which side you're doing. Bring that through and tuck that aside so you don't get any uh, grinding sparks or anything on it. If you do need to cut any of the bolts, keeps that out of the way nice and safe. Make sure you cl clamp the rubber flexi on the brake pipe before you fully disconnect the, the hard line on the, on the suspension arm so you don't lose too much fluid. So having a bit of trouble releasing the unions on the brake pipe, despite it being having been replaced in the last few years, someone's either done them up far too tight or they're just corroded. Um, it's not too much of a problem because we can replace the pipes that are damaged, but we need to get the top union undone in order to get the arm off. And it's putting up a bit of a fight. Okay, so with the brake pipes out and removed, we can start disconnecting the height sensor bushing from the arm. And on this side, the uh, air suspension valve block is mounted on the strut. Much easier to get to the bolt if that's out of the way. So just pop that up out of its grommets and tuck that behind. So the first fixing we're gonna tackle, the one on the hub and the reason for that is once that's out it's very it's much easier to pivot the arm up and down to get purchase on the other two fixings which are on the chassis so it looks like we've been lucky and the nuts coming undone on this Once that's off, the bolt needs to be knocked out of the arm. Now, that's 
the old cam washer coming off the back. Sometimes the bolts get very seized inside the bushing, so it takes a bit of uh, knocking to get them moving, but persevere. And that's that bolt out. So next we can move on to the front most of the inboard chassis bolts. On this side as well, the air compressor uh, casing gets in the way of the bolt coming out and it's difficult to get a socket onto the bolt head. So it's worth just unclipping the top of the compressor housing, moving it forward a little bit just to free up some room. So the frontmost bolt has an 18 millimeter bolt head. It's worth making sure it's nice and clean before you use a breaker bar. And if you're lucky, it will start moving. Looks like this one's gonna come out, so that's good. With a bit of tapping, get that bolt through the bush. Again, can be a bit fiddly on this side because of the uh, compressor cover. Finally, the bolt's out. And the arm's free of the chassis at the front edge. So the final fixing is the largest bush, which is in line with the, the hub ball joint on the chassis. And it's this one that often puts up the biggest fight. So release the wiring harness from just beside the bolt head to make sure that you don't damage it when you're undoing the bolt, if it comes undone. So when you do need a little bit of extra leverage on something, you can link two spanners together, but you do need to be very careful uh, if they do start flexing too much or they feel like something's going to give, then call it a day and you'll have to cut the bolts off instead. We've tried to get that bolt undone, but there's absolutely no way it's coming out. So we're going to cut the main body of the arm off, which will leave us plenty of access to then cut the bolt without damaging the chassis brackets. So the first cut we're going to make is across the top of the arm here. And then we're going to lift it up because the bush is damaged. You can easily move the arm and cut across the base as well and that will leave us plenty of space to cut the bolt off without any damage to the chassis. Okay so we know where we're going to cut the arm now. First of all Steve's got an angle grinder with a slim cutting disc. He's going to cut the brake pipe bracket off the top of the arm to make getting to the bush socket much easier. Once he's done that we're going to make two cuts, one above the arm itself, lift the arm up, cut underneath, bring that out of the way and that will give us loads of room to cut that rusty bolt. Right, so once both cuts have been made, the arm should break away from the bush and you can lift the whole thing out, which leaves loads of room to then cut that rusty bolt out before we fit the new arm. Right, so done our job with the angle grinder. Now we've got a reciprocating saw with a fresh blade and we're just going to make two cuts down each end of the bolt and then that will come out of the chassis. So once you've cut all the way through the bolt and the bush, you can bring the old pieces out. So with the old bush and bolt out, we can now get ready to fit the new brick part suspension arm. Okay, so we've deburred and wire brushed the chassis brackets. Uh, so now that they're all nice and clean, we can slot the arm into place. So when you're fitting the new arms, it's really important 
when you fit the bolts that you don't grease the thread. You can grease the shank so it doesn't seize inside the bushes, but if you grease the thread and then torque them to specification, there's a very real possibility that they might snap. And that's because the grease changes the friction between the nut and the thread. So you're not actually talking it to spec, you're actually over talking it and that can obviously be very dangerous. So don't grease the thread when you fit the new bolts. You'll also notice that the nuts are welded into these nut plates and the tang on the nut plate locates in the chassis bracket so that you don't have to hold the nut with a spanner while you tighten the bolt up. Front bolt's a little bit tricky because of the compressor cover on this side. Once that bolt's in, you can just start it by hand in the nut plate, making sure that tang is located correctly in the chassis bracket. And we're also not going to tighten these bolts up until the suspension is resettled at ride height. Otherwise, the bushes will get bound up, they'll wear prematurely, and the handling won't be correct. So it could take a little bit of wiggling. The arm will still move freely up and down, but getting the hub lined up, the hub ball joint lined up in the socket in the arm can be a bit tricky. Obviously, there's quite a lot of weight on the hub from the brake assembly, so getting that bolt started can be a, a little bit time consuming. We've also transferred the paint marks from the old arm and the old bolt onto the new items so that when we tighten everything up, we can be as close as possible with the wheel alignment. But as we say, whenever you've replaced suspension arms, you need to get the four wheel alignment done anyway. Otherwise, the tyres could wear unevenly. So the first bolt we're nipping up is the one that goes through the hub ball joint. That's because being a ball joint, it's a lot more free to rotate than the two inboard bushes. So that can be tightened up to begin with, don't have to worry about it being at ride height for that. Once that's tightened, we can continue tightening up the inboard bolts using a ratchet spanner on the frontmost one, just because of access being tight due to the compressor. Just need to snug that down so that the bush can still move in the bracket to avoid it binding up before we set the height and do the final torque. So just measuring the distance between the hub and the top of the wheel arch there. And then we're going to use a bottle jack to carefully raise the suspension assembly up to normal ride height. And we've still got the vehicle supported securely on the ramp, so it's not gonna go anywhere. This is literally just raising the suspension arms up high enough so we can fully torque those in the bolts and pre prevent any binding of the bushes. Remeasuring the distance again. Do need to be very careful when you're doing this. Make sure the jack's settled properly on whichever surface you're on. Okay, so we've achieved the right ride height now, and we can finally torque those inner two bolts. Okay, so with the arm in place and all three bolts fitted, we need to raise the suspension up to ride height before we torque the inner bolts. So Steve's just measuring the height as we go, raising it up with the bottle jack. You need to make sure whatever you use to raise the suspension arm stays flat and level on the surface to avoid any danger of it slipping. So it's 48 centimetres from the arch to the centre of the hub, the drive shaft. And now we can torque the inner bolts. Well, you can torque the front inner bolt because there's absolutely no room between the centre bolt and the body mount to get a torque wrench in. So you just need to make sure that one's really, really tight. Front bolt you torque to 175 Newton metres. We've got a flexible headed torque wrench on this, which makes life a lot easier. That one's torqued. As I said before, because of the position of the body mount, it's impossible to get a standard torque wrench in to torque this in a bolt without a special attachment. So we're putting a 21 millimeter spanner on it, getting it as tight as possible, and then we'll give it one last good crank just to make sure it can't go anywhere. Once 
once that's as tight as it will go with a single spanner, Steve just doubles up just to get that last bit of torque on there. Access is quite restricted with the arm jacked up, so you do have to be a bit patient, keep turning a little bit, putting the spanner back on, turning a bit more. Okay, so now it's time to torque the final hub bolt. That's 133 newton meters. Make sure the paint marks stay aligned as you tighten it up. That's that bolt torqued. So now we need to fit the brake pipes, the ABS sensor, continue reconnect the, the uh, electronic height sensor and finish the rebuild. So the height sensor just pushes back onto its barbed peg on the top of the arm. You can bring the brake pipe back down that we tucked up out of the way. We're fitting a new brake pipe because the old one was so rusty. So just tuck that through its bracket. Secure the, the brake flexi in the top of the suspension arm bracket with a new metal clip. They get very rusty, so it's worth having new ones on hand for when you uh, change the upper arms. Now we can offer up the new brake flexi to the caliper and we'll join the two together with the hard pipe. We can then take the new hard pipe, route it underneath the suspension arm and locate the unions in the flexies at either end. We had to replace our hard brake line on the suspension arm because our old one got completely ruined taking it off, but if you're lucky, you won't have any of those issues and yours will come off and you'll be able to reuse it on the new suspension arm. And there are no 11 millimeter union on the standard pipes. So just get them started in the threads and then you can wind them in. And because the brake flexes are held in place with those metal clips, they shouldn't try and turn when you wind the unions in, which is helpful. Again, using a, a pipe spanner to tighten the unions up to avoid any damage to the unions, because if you use a standard open-ended spanner, can sometimes round them off slightly and make some a pain to get off in the future. So the last thing to do is to offer up the ABS sensor wiring and then reconnect its plug behind the air suspension air spring. There's lots of little rubber grommets to push into brackets as you go along the suspension arm. They should all fall to hand quite easily. Connector's a little bit fiddly to get to because it's tucked behind the top of the air spring and the uh, strut tower. So don't force it, it should just clip in quite easily. So the last thing we need to do to complete the brake hydraulic system again is to take the old hose off the back of the caliper and connect our new brake flexi before we then bleed the system. We can now top up the brake fluid, push all the air out and the brake system is complete. Steve's just reattaching the top compressor cover and the rear suspension arm replacement is complete. The last thing to do, of course, is bleed the brakes, refit the road wheel, and then we're taking this vehicle for a four wheel alignment because even though we've lined up the paint marks on the bolt, there'll still be a degree of inaccuracy on the rear geometry. So we don't want to get any uh, uneven tire wear. So any suspension work, you'll need a four wheel alignment afterwards. Uh, the other problem arm, the suspension component that fails regularly on these is the front lower suspension arm. And we've covered that in another video in the Brit Park workshop series.